Okay, so today I'm going to do a build description and also a gear set review for the Deadeye gear set. All right. Now I just gonna I'm just gonna say really quickly this is the best PVP build I have ever found. Uh, this functions amazingly in the dark zone against other players. Uh, it's fantastic. I really haven't run into any trouble yet. I mean, it's it functions so well. The time to kill is extremely low. Um, I feel like I can burst down pretty much any player and I'm always kind of left with this sensation of they had no idea what hit them uh, And I just came out on top, you know with flying colors. So that's kind of the, the position I'm at with this build I love it. There's a lot of room to improve this build as well um, There's a huge amount of changes that, that you can make and that other people can make um, To make this build even better. So this right here is probably about like the low end of the of the medium strength that this build can achieve um, this is, you know, a low strength to medium strength for what the build potential is. Uh, someone who's maxed this out, min-maxed everything, is just going to absolutely destroy every other player that they encounter um, almost instantaneously if they really do have all the proper roles. So just to get right into it, I'm going to look at the Deadeye set, what it does, before I talk about my specific gear and why I've chosen these things. Um, this, the two-piece bonus is 20% marksman rifle critical hit damage. Obviously, this is a sniper rifle build. Uh, the three-piece bonus is 40% initial bullet stability, kind of useful uh, with the M1A, especially when hip firing and things like that, you know, when you're repeatedly scoping in, um, you know, if you do choose to hard aim at certain points, but, you know, it, it's good, it's not amazing, but it's good. And then the four-piece bonus, what really is, you know, making this build functional and so interesting, uh, is while not scoped, critical chance on marksman rifles is increased to 100%, but headshot damage bonus is removed. Now, a lot of people, including myself, previously up till now have thought oh that's that's stupid there's no reason i'm going to be using the dead eye set um that's not really going to do anything good for me because the you know the headshot damage the huge amount of headshot damage that you get from the marksman rifles seems to be kind of you know a, a really integral part of what makes them good so i was thinking you know if you take that away yeah you can do kind of high body crits and you get them all the time but is that really going to be valuable and the answer in pve is no that's not going to be that valuable but the answer in pvp is is much different so I'm going to demonstrate a few things about this right now, this four-piece bonus. So first of all, when you scope in here, when you actually hard aim, there's a difference. If you have like a 15 times scope, you'll actually see the scope, you know, marker come up around your screen. You'll know when you're actually scoped in. If you are not actually hard scoped in, and I'm talking like hit your stick to hard scope in, then you will get a critical hit every time. Now, as you can see, I will never get a critical strike. But if I unscope, I will get a critical strike every single time. So that means you can actually aim down the sights on your sniper rifle, pretty much how most people are already used to doing it. Um, and that's important to note. Now, I will not get any bonus headshot damage. As you can see, it's the same no matter where I hit on the body, but it's always a critical strike. And that's pretty cool. Another thing to note is that, you know, when hip firing, you're also going to get a critical strike every time. And that's where the beauty comes from, especially with an M1A. The hip firing of an M1A while getting a critical strike every single time you know, against NPCs may not be that valuable. They have a giant base health pool. Um, it's not really going to, you know, shred them any faster than, you know, a G36C would or, you know, a submachine gun. But against players, it really excels. So the way I've chosen all my gear pieces is, is thus. So I've done four-piece uh, Deadeye and two-piece Hunter's Faith. Now, up till now, I've always thought the Hunter's Faith was a horrible gear set. I didn't like any of the bonuses. I thought it was useless. The two-piece Hunter's Faith, when paired with the Deadeye, makes your, your sniper shots even more powerful. So it's a really good pairing. Um, one thing that you're freed up to do and you could do is use two-piece Final Measure if you're concerned about sticky bombs. But with a base health pool of over 100,000, 102,000, I'm really not finding that I die to sticky bombs all that often. Um, you know, maybe if I'm already at half health, I will get dropped. But typically, I'm not getting out 100 to 0 by these tacticians. It just doesn't happen anymore. Another side note, I'm noticing less and less tacticians um, with the introduction of these new gear sets and as people slowly develop newer and better builds, um, it seems like the majority of players now can actually beat them. So it's kind of fallen out of the metagame as far as I'm concerned. Um, so I'm going to take an individual look at all of my Deadeye pieces and talk about why uh, I've prioritized the stats that I have. The Deadeye chest piece, I roll armor on all of my chest pieces. I try to hit the armor cap as quickly as possible without using gear mods. Um, but when I have to, you know, use gear mods here and there, that's fine. Uh, this is a 240 piece. There is room for improvement. If you were to find a 268 piece, you can get much better stats on that, and that would be very uh, helpful as well. Health on kill could easily be something like EDR, um, but armor is the important one. Ammo capacity is nice. Support station range is, it's, you know, it's not anything I really care about right now. Um, first aid self heal, first aid ally heal, things like that are going to be valuable in PvP, especially in PvP in the Dark Zone. Um, so that's the chest piece. I'm going to take a look at the mask. Um, 
Now this mask here has health on kill. That does not need to be critical hit chance. Once you have the Deadeye 4 piece uh, enabled, you do not want critical hit chance on any of your gear. It's, uh, it's a stat that isn't going to matter, especially when facing other players with your M1A. Um, <clears throat> health on kill is nice. When you do get a kill, you get a chunk, a little blip of health back. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, it could be something better though. Uh, you know, skill power on the masks is extremely potent, so you might want to go with something like that. Um, and in, the, in case you do, it would make your pulse stronger and things like that. So my skill power is actually extremely low on this build. Uh, it's not ideal, but I am going to be running in a squad almost every time I play this. This isn't really what I picture to be a solo play build. This is more of, you know, like uh, you hit like a truck and you're always with the team. Um, it's a team play build where you're the one dealing the bulk of damage and other, you know, your teammates can finish them off and things like that. So major attribute, skill power would be nice, over health on kill. Um, perhaps I'll re-roll that, I'm not sure if I already have. I really just cobbled this build together very recently and then did some Dark Zone PvP to showcase what it does. Enemy armor damage, that's nice as a minor attribute, there are more valuable things. And then the skill attribute could be much better, explosion radius on the Seeker Mine, like doesn't really matter at all. Um, so now the gloves, this is a very important piece of the set. So there's a lot of things that you definitely want on this um, that are going to actually make you a, a great deal stronger. So the major attributes you want, you definitely want critical hit damage as high as you can possibly roll. Over 40% is ideal. I have 39%, that's nice. And then you want marksman rifle damage. You want to increase that base damage on your marksman rifle so your critical strikes are multiplying on top of that to be much higher. 2,116 marksman rifle damage is a great roll. I'm really glad I got that. The damage to elites could easily be something else if you want to prioritize you know, a different attribute. Um, if your secondary is an SMG, you could go SMG damage there. If you really do want to use both weapons equally, I almost always only use my M1A when I'm using this build, then you could roll something like critical hit chance to make your assault rifle or your SMG more viable. But for this, for the sake of this build, damage to elites is kind of just a, a dead stat that I don't really need, and there's nothing else I could really re-roll it to that would help a, a ton. It does help in the dark zone when clearing NPCs, so I keep it on there. It's, it's not so bad. Um, the holster... You know, pretty standard, the way I roll holsters now, I just get, you know, the best three stat holster I can find. This is a 214, okay, this is a bad holster. It has very low rolls, 516 firearms, that could be easily 200 higher. Uh, 586 stamina, again, almost 200 higher quite easily, and the same with the electronics. If you have a good 268 Deadeye quick draw holster, that's going to improve your build miles ahead of what mine currently is. Um, and the build I have is already effective. So, as I said, this build has so much room to improve, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I'm using kind of on the low end of how strong this build can be, and it's still giving me amazing results. Uh, Seeker Mind damage, I would prefer first aid self-heal, uh, or anything else really, because Seeker Mind to me is just not something I'm ever going to use. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the holster is what's allowing me to get the four-piece bonus, so for now I'm making do with what I have. And a lot of players watching, you know, you're probably not going to have a wealth of 268 gear. Um, I know I'm still mix and matching, and it's very difficult to find all the perfect 268 gear pieces I want. I'm still using a lot of 240s and 214s. So this is a, a realistic uh, guide in, in that respect to building something based on the gear that you have and incorporating these four-piece bonuses into a fluid, a fluid build that is actually going to be, you know, responsive and, you know, competitive in the Dark Zone. So then moving on to the Two Hunters Faith, I have a nice roll on these knee pads. Uh, critical hit damage, that's what you want over something like armor or you know anything else in the major attribute category you definitely want critical hit damage you're going to stack as much of this as possible to make your critical strikes as effective as possible um, you're going to want to still hit the armor cap but that's achievable with a few mods and if you have high armor rolls on your other gear pieces these are stamina knee pads uh, they have a firearms uh, mod that's going to help me achieve the 2843 firearms i have which allows me to unlock brutal on my secondary gun um, 2825 or give or take is about how much firearms or stamina or any you know, typical major attribute, you're going to need to unlock any talent um, for that specific attribute. So you're going to want to achieve that on firearms at least. Any any additional firearms, you know, 200 from the holster here and there, or however, you know, you've rolled it, if you have better mods, is just going to make you even stronger. I'm on the low end, you know, 2,800 firearms with 3,400 stamina and 1,000 electronics, that's quite low. A lot, a lot of players are going to have much better stats than me, but this is still a very functional build. Uh, the two-piece Hunter's Faith 20% marksman rifle critical hit bonus. I've ticked that off, so that's super helpful as well. Overall, a good pair of knee pads. And then I'm going to look at my backpack. So the backpack is a firearms backpack with a great, great firearms roll, 744. Uh, it has critical hit damage. Again, this could be something like skill power if you do want to prioritize pulse as one of your bursting mechanics. Um, I personally don't do that. I like to rely on, you know, just the actual base, base gun itself. I don't really need any other bonuses active to have a low uh, TTK or time to kill. Um, I find I have really great results with this, 
But if you were to prioritize skill power, you know, instead of the critical hit damage, you would boost the effectiveness of your pulse, especially if you did on both your backpack and your mask. And as a result, you would probably not really be sacrificing anything in the long run. Uh, you'd be, maybe move away from, you know, this sustained high damage output to more of a, a super damage bursty style mechanic, uh, which would be nice. The skill attributes are great. First aid self heal, I like that a lot. And pulse duration, both of those are fantastic for the build. This is a really great Hunter's Faith backpack that I rolled, and I'm really lucky to have this one. It helps the build quite a bit. Okay, so that's all the gear pieces that I have. Um, now I'm going to talk about the weapon. So the first thing I'm using is this SOCOM M1A. This is my primary gun. This is what I'm going to be using all the time in PvP, and it's really fantastic. Now, there are much better versions. This is a 204, first of all. So you can get a 229 version of this with better talents that's going to be way more effective. And secondly, the only talent I have on here that's really critical to the build is Deadly. Uh, you do not need Brutal or anything like that. So you don't actually have to worry about getting a specific two talents on the gun. You just need Deadly. you got to make sure you have Deadly on that M1A, and that's going to pair very nicely with the overall build composition and allow you to do a lot more damage. Uh, accurate is nice, since I'm going to be hip-firing quite a bit. It keeps that reticle nice and tight. Uh, I can land shots on target very well. Um, it could be something else. I would prefer something like Responsive or Competent. Anything with base percent weapon damage is going to increase your effectiveness drastically, okay? So if I had switched Accurate out, I, I'm still in the process of re-rolling this gun. Um, but if I switch accurate out for something like responsive, that's right away going to be actually more than 10% you know, boost to the damage output. It's actually going to be much higher than that because that, that bonus applies before all the critical hit multipliers. So it's really great. Um, prepared damage is increased by 13.5% when more than 40 meters from the target. That's hardly ever going to be the case. When it is the case, it's a very nice bonus to have. But something like competent in the third slot, especially with percent weapon damage after using a skill. You're going to be able to use your pulse, you, you know, proc that competent get the bonus weapon damage, the bonus critical hit damage from Pulse, and you're just going to absolutely melt through targets like you would not believe. It's, it's amazing. So this gun right here is actually uh, probably one of the worst, the worst M1As I could be using while still keeping the build functional, and it still performs nicely. Someone with uh, a deadly, responsive, uh, competent M1A would just be unstoppable. So that's something to keep an eye out for, uh, you know, if you ever do want to build you know, the Deadeye gear set, something with those talents, you know, and forget about Brutal, because the, the headshot multiplier is not actually going to be active once you have the four piece. Um, moving down to the, the mods on this gun, again, you want percent weapon damage at all times. As many percent weapon, weapon damage bonuses as you can possibly stack will make this build even more effective. If you want to pair it with something like the Reckless chess piece, if you have four other pieces that, uh, that don't uh, include a chess piece, you have four Deadeye pieces and your chess slot is free, then go ahead and do that. That's going to increase the effectiveness of the build drastically as well. Um, but for this, the purposes of what I have in scavenging this build together, I've gone with this current setup. Um, I don't need critical hit chance at all, so the large optics you know, mod I have on there in, in the, the optic mod slot is accuracy and optimal range. I really I don't need headshot damage, I don't need critical hit chance at all, they're in fact completely you know, irrelevant with this. So I went for accuracy to keep the reticle tight again, and optimal range. Now normally I say a lot about how accuracy is inflated on the meter, but you're not even going to look at the meter at all with this build. It has nothing to do with your, your potential damage and the way the build is going to function in PvP. So just take your eyes completely off the meter, it doesn't matter at all, especially with sniper rifles. Uh, for my muzzle break, I have stability and critical hit damage. Um, it, accuracy can also work, but I like the stability so that my, my gun doesn't recoil much higher after every, every shot. I am going to be spamming while hip firing. Uh, as, as fast as possible, so I don't want the gun to jump too high too quickly. I want to keep it under control, so having some stability is going to be really nice. And I'm not going to have actual stability on my underbarrel mod. I'm still looking for a better one, but the important thing to note about your underbarrel is you want hip fire accuracy for sure, because you're going to be hip firing quite often uh, with this M1A. And uh, stability under that, or initial bullet stability, anything like that, um, to help you with the, the handling of the gun overall. So that's what I've done for, for mods. That's why I've prioritized you know, what I have. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly good gun, you know, on the low end of how good it could be, but it gets the job done. So I'm going to zoom out and talk about my abilities and skills. I'm using Pulse with the, the Critical Hit Damage modifier. It's an extra 40% when I use it. That's a bursty mechanic. Allows me to hit much higher. Any little chunk of Critical Hit Damage that you can get is going to make you much, much stronger. Um, I also use uh, Heal with Overdose. I could use Booster Shot. Again, if you use Booster Shot, your base damage is going to increase, and as a result, the crits are going to multiply on even more effectively, and you're just going to become a lot more stronger and have a lot higher damage output. Uh, one of my teammates actually uses Booster Shot routinely now. That's why I'm not going to run it with this current setup, but you can use that. What I use instead of Security Link, 
um, or Survivor Link, I should say. I use Tactical Link because uh, three of my teammates are running the damage reduction signature. And if I have Tactical Link, I can pop this whenever I feel like I have an opportunity to kill a lot of targets. And the 50% damage buff uh, is massive, okay? It's going to increase your, uh, decrease your time to kill a huge amount. You're going to be able to, like, two-shot players, possibly one-shot if you have the correct bonuses stacked. If you're in, in smart cover and things like that. And this is not like a headshot critical. I'm talking one shot with a hip-fired M1A shot to the body. It can't happen. Um, this is really an amazing build. It's a lot of fun to play. So talents, uh, I have triage, especially when I'm in a, a group. I always run triage. You know, it's kind of a courtesy thing with your teammates so they can get their cooldowns reduced as, as well as yours. Um, and overall, you all help each other quite a bit. I then run critical save just to make myself more tanky, survivability. This is the talent setup I run on pretty much every single build now. Um, there's nothing else I've really found except in, unless it's in a situational circumstance that's better. Uh, then I run tech support. It increases the duration on pulse if I kill a target. That's super helpful. Also with heal, if you fire it on the ground and kill a target, it will remain active longer, which is nice if you have booster shot. If you're the one popping it, tech support will allow you to keep that bonus active for longer periods of time. Um, on the move is very nice. Uh, bouncing from target to target. If you do get the kill for 10 seconds while moving and you will be moving while hip firing this m1a it's not like a typical sniper build where you're going to be standing static and trying to land headshots you're going to be bouncing around the same way you would with an smg or an assault rifle pretty much the entire fight uh, at about the same range as you would be and when you do proc it 30 percent damage reduction is nice it'll help you stay up so that's my talents and then now we're going to note a couple more really important things uh if a teammate is running smart cover it's going to help tremendously okay when you take cover so first, let's, let's hip fire without being in cover. I have a lot of stability and accuracy on the gun. As you can see, I have decent stability. Um, the gun remains pretty much in control, and I can keep it on target. And 148,000 every time I shoot. Uh, critical strike every time. If you take cover, uh, after I reload here, I'll show you. The reticle closes up a lot, okay? If you are blind firing with this, uh, the reticle does, you know, zoom out to a size that, you know, would be uh, about the same as hip firing. But... If you're in cover with smart cover, you do have a decreased reticle size, and you're going to be getting that giant boost to base damage from the smart cover. So even if you move back and forth and quickly are firing, um, what you can do is still land shots that are going to be much more effective. The smart cover boost is going to make you uh, hit like a truck even more so than you already do, and as a result, you can drop players you know, almost instantaneously when they come out of their cover and try to advance. If they were trying to come from the back of the room up towards me, I could easily just start blind firing and probably drop them within three to four shots, um, especially if I have smart cover active. Uh, the, without any bonuses, you're still going to do amazing damage, but when you multiply on top pulse, tactical link, smart cover, booster shot, all these different things with critical hit damage and percent weapon damage, it's just going to end up being you know, almost unstoppable. So I'm going to throw it over to some gameplay and talk over it. Uh, I don't actually have an entire full unedited manhunt clip, but I do have a lot of good, you know, kill uh, sections of gameplay where I can show you exactly what's going on and talk about it. Okay, so here we go. I'm hip firing, as you can see, and every time I hit, I'm hitting for about, let's see, 18,000, it looks like. Uh, and 18,000 per bullet, this build is going to be, you know, extremely effective. Now, it, what it relies on most out of everything is your ability to hit those shots. As you can see on that player, I was landing 25,000 shots um, and just dropped him, you know, super quickly, almost instantaneously. Um, this build relies exclusively on your ability to land shots. As you can see, the time to kill was extremely short there. Uh, I believe it was much shorter than if I was using an assault rifle. Um, when you get up behind players, you know, you're going to be landing strong shots every time. I just downed another one. It was quite easy. Um, and with the extended magazine size, you know, when you're starting with 10 and increasing it by you know, uh, nearly a hundred uh, with, with a good magazine, you're going to be up at, you know, 19, 20 bullets, sometimes even 21. That's a plenty big clip with a decent rate of fire and just massive base damage. As you can see, I'm not the best. My aim isn't perfect. But when I do hit a shot, you know, 11,000 there and finished him off. Um, it's It relies more on, on actual, you know, micromanagement of your aiming. Uh, what I would consider, you know, skill. Uh, there is some aim assist on, on Xbox, on console that you can take advantage of. But, you know, most of the time while you're hip firing this M1A, it's going to rely on if you can keep the reticle where it needs to be and land those shots. And if you can, this build has nearly unlimited potential for, for dropping players, you know, fast. Uh, there were some, some clips I didn't get, unfortunately, because I wasn't actually recording at the time, where me and my friend, Jay Castro, we just downed like three players in three seconds. I would pop tactical link and then just one, two, three, um, right after one another. 
Uh, with tech support, it was extending the duration of my signature, it was extending the duration of my pulse, and allowing us to bounce from target to target, uh, despite the fact that they were tanky, just melting them, absolutely taking their health bar out almost instantaneously. Uh, it's a really fun build. This is, you know, by far and away my favorite PvP build now. As you can see there, we're just absolutely shredding players. I, I'm sure that they're probably, you know, talking to their friends saying, oh my gosh, I don't know how they melted me that quickly. Um, if they're not, you know, if they're used to encountering this, then I'd be actually really impressed. I really have not seen many people running a, a four-piece Deadeye, especially in the Dark Zone or on console right now. Maybe on PC it's a little bit different, but right now for me, it just seems like this is uh, a build that has not really emerged in its rightful place uh, in the metagame. I feel like this build could become the meta build for PvP. If it's not, then I'd be really interested to see what's, what is taking away its slot as, as the king build because this just to, it, to me it feels so effective um there's yet to be a circumstance where i actually got into a head-to-head -head gun battle and could not out damage my opponent <clears throat> excuse me it um in every single circumstance that i've encountered no matter who i was fighting i could out damage them just in in head-to-head -head while hip firing if i had a full magazine that was it i didn't even need bonuses sometimes i if i use pulse it'll just give me that much more of an edge but i really don't encounter players that can out damage me um I, I really don't know what else there is to say about the build. It's extremely effective. I'd really like to hear people's feedback on it. I'd actually like as many people as possible to try this build out and tell me what you think because as of right now, I'm viewing this build as it, it should be the king of the metagame. Um, I really believe it should. This this gear set, uh, the, the Reclaimer set has its bugs. You know, people are saying, oh, it's dominating the Dark Zone. Um, but, you know, it has bugs and things like that. You can use multiple at, at one time with the cooldown reduction and things like that. Um, but I feel that <clears throat> Deadeye just has the sheer potential when min-max correctly to, to one-shot and two-shot players with base damage on body shot crits. And I think that if someone were to actually perfect this build to its maximum potential, they would be unstoppable. Um, I, I really, I hope that someone can. I hope that someone can share with me when they do that. It's going to be my main goal for the next, I, I don't know, X amount of time, a, a while, to perfect this build to the point where I can, you know, use it all the time and one-shot everyone. Um, as you can see, the, the time to kill is just so, so low. And yes, there are multiple of us shooting these players, but those 18, I always crit for between, you know, 11 to 25, 26,000 damage. And um, with 11 being on the low end, and in that case, they do have plenty of time to heal, you know, but that's an easy 30, 40,000 damage over the course of like maybe a second, maybe a little bit more. So that's very difficult for players to deal with oftentimes. Um, but if I am hitting for, you know, 25,000, or in that case 16,000, that adds up very quickly. If I'm hitting three shots, that's 70, 75,000 damage to their health pool just gone that quickly. And even if they do pop that heal, there is that split second where the, the heal does not proc and give them the health to their health pool. And if I can land one more shot during that time, uh, it's already over and, and they drop, despite the fact that they've got the heal all ready to go. So that's going to wrap it up. Um, my overall assessment of the Dead Eye gear set is that is it is fantastic. It is hands down the best PvP set that is in the game right now, in my opinion. Uh, if you have a differing opinion, please back it up with some facts, but post some feedback in the comments. It's been really great. The community is growing at a really great pace. Uh, it's really awesome. So if you disagree with me, let me know why, but you know, contribute to the discussion. Uh, if you agree with me, let me know. If you've used Deadeye or if you're in the process of using Deadeye, let me know your results. Let me know how you've tweaked the build in order to obtain maximum efficiency. Uh, right now, this is you know, I, sometimes I, I change my opinion very quickly. I say, this is my favorite build. Then the next one I make is also my favorite. This has taken the cake out of every other build I've pre created previously as the most fun, the most interesting, the most diverse from what the metagame used to be in terms of SMG uh, run and gun. And right now, it's just, it's what I'm going to be sticking with for a long time in, in most of my PvP videos, unless I'm specifically testing out some other mechanic. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Uh, a big thank you to everyone who moved the channel with me. Uh, and a big, big thank you to, to Eker, who actually gave me the chess piece when we completed the uh, Dragon's Nest Challenge Mode Incursion that allowed me to round out this set. Thanks, man. It was a real pleasure playing with you. And thanks to you, I now have this phenomenal PvP, you know, four-piece set and build that's allowing me to have a lot more fun in the Dark Zone than I previously did. So thank you again. Um, as always, thanks for supporting. There's going to be a link to the Facebook uh, page down in the description. You can go ahead and like that, post your stuff up there, builds. You know, you can just show off, show your numbers, stuff like that. Hopefully it's going to become a really great community in which everybody can uh, group up on their different, you know, platforms. Um, but till then, you know, it's just a great place to share your experiences with the game. My gamer tag is also in the description. I do my best to play with subscribers and supporters whenever I can. 
uh, if I can't, you know, I'm oftentimes bu busy with channel stuff, but when I can play with uh, you guys, I will always make an effort to do so. So if you want to add me, feel free to do so. Um, I try and keep up and, you know, play with everyone, but if mistakes are made, I'm sorry about that. Uh, thanks for all the active discussion in the comments. Uh, anyone that, you know, contributes positive feedback, I'll try to, you know, give you a shout out if it's, you know, particularly noticeable. And, you know, I'll be really appreciative of all the comments and the support. So thanks again, and as always, have a nice day.